Number eight then from paper two of the 2021 National Five resource paper, five mark question for calculating the area of a part of a circle. Now it really just should have said, calculate the shaded area and you'd have to figure out the bits and pieces. But it tells you, it tells you that this is a sector and that this portion here that's shaded is a segment and that you've got a triangle here. So it says it's been split into those parts. So it's telling you how to find this then. Well, because the way you find that will just be get the big area, which is the sector, get the area of the triangle, take it away and you'll be left with the segment. The segment being the part of the circle cut off by a chord. Well, get the sector first of all. Now, you could do this, since there aren't any parts to this, it doesn't specifically say find this part of it or this part of it, you could actually find the answer in one line. And that would keep it completely accurate because you could just type it all the figures into, into your calculator and your answer would be accurate. But I'm going to do it in two parts. So the sector, first of all. So that would be as a slice out of a circle. How big a slice have you got? Well, you've got 110 out of the available 360 degrees. So you've got that fraction of a circle. So you've got that fraction of pi r squared. Now, getting that fraction... We're stating that fraction as a mark. So now you just got to put in the figures. I'll just knock that down a bit. So that's 11, just to say, typing in zeros. 11 upon 36 times pi, and the radius is 14, times 14 squared. Now it just says, substitute into the area for the next mark, and there's nothing specifically for the answer. I'm going to let it hover in there a bit. So put that into your calculator. And you get... Oh, of course, you have to go for the decimal. You get 188.146 and so on. The usual little ellipsis there telling you that can, that's just exactly what the calculator told me. It's not been rounded off at all. Now, that's then stored until I press the equal to button in the calculator's answer memory. However, since I'm going to be doing another calculation first and then taking that away from it, that means I'll lose that unless I want to store it into another memory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round this off a bit. I think I'll call it 188, and if I want one decimal place, then I'll make it 15 centimetres squared. So I'll have a definite answer for that part. Right, what about this triangle that I'm going to get rid of? Well, rather than splitting up and trying to find the base and the height, there's a simple formula for that when you've got two sides in the included angle. That's the half AB sine C. Now, you don't need to write a half AB sine C. You can just use the pattern for it and go in with the figures. A half of 14 times, and that must also be a 14 because that's still the radius, times the sine of the angle in between, which is 110 degrees. Now, doing that is worth a mark. So typing that in and pressing the button gives you 92.0898 and so on. I've already rounded that off, so I might as well round this off the same. I've gone for two decimal places there. So 0 0.09 centimetres squared. So those marks are sort of shared between that and the partial answers. Now you can get the segment. Because the segment will be... The whole thing, which was 188.15, take away that triangle, which you didn't want, 92.09, which you don't really need a calculator for now, because that's just going to leave an 06, and then we've got a 96, and then bring it down, so 96.1, one more figure than I wanted in my answer, 96.1 centimetres squared. Now here you're getting one mark for knowing to subtract them. And then one for the final answer. Now you could have kept it completely accurate. You did two intermediate parts here, so you, you lost the accuracy. But you could have worked it out. If you were brave, because you're, it's an all or nothing risk this, by saying the area of the segment is going to be the sector, just put it all down, that times pi times 14 squared, Minus the triangle, which will be a half of 14 times 14 times the sine of 110. And then just type that lot in. And then press the button for the completely accurate answer, 96.0566 and so on.
which of course rounds off to the same thing. So there's no indication of how they would mark it if you were to do it in one go. If you were to do that, you'd probably be better before that saying the shaded segment equals the sector minus the triangle, then putting those parts in. Another thing that can happen when you do it all in a line is you'll find common factors which can simplify the procedure. Like there's a 14 squared and a 14 squared, they could come out leaving a smaller amount to type in and simplify. So number nine, very straightforward little question here on the equation of a line for three marks. Let's go. Here's the equation of a line written in that particular form, that ax plus by plus c equals zero form. And it says, what's the gradient for two marks? Well, that's not the gradient. You only get the gradient if it's in the form y equals mx plus c. So that's what you're going to aim for. You need to have it in the form of y equals mx plus c, because then you can see what the line looks like. That's the gradient, and that's where it cuts the y-axis. So just rearrange this then into that form. So you want y on its own over here, whether or not you end up with fractions or not. So 4y would be take that across, and that's a negative 3x. Take that across, and it's a plus 8. Now divide by 4, remembering that everything gets divided by 4. So the negative 3 gets divided by 4, and the 8 gets divided by 4. There's the equation of the line, and from that, by comparing it to this, you can state that the, the gradient of the line is negative 3 quarters. So there was a mark for getting it into that form, the form that shows you those features of the line, and then a mark for picking that out. And part B just follows on from that by saying, state the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Well, it cuts the y-axis at the number at the end. That's the y-coordinate, because when x is 0, you're left with y is 2. But it just said state. So I know it happens at 0, and that's a 2. And that was a mark. So number 10, for three marks, change the subject of a formula. So following on from the last question, it's another very simple question for three marks. So instead of it saying D equals, that being the subject of the formula there, you want to rearrange it so it's H on its own at the front. Well, one thing you can always do, first of all, when you're copying it down, and I've just got it there because that was the question. If I was copying it down, I'd write it the other way around. Just to get H on that side. Unless, of course, H was in the denominator here, for instance, or being subtracted here, then I would leave it because it would come over naturally by itself in the next step. So writing it that way around doesn't get you anything, because all I've done is written the question down in a way that suited me. Right, so the first step would be get rid of that square root, square both sides. So squaring that side rehydrates its innards, so it just comes back out at whatever it was the square root of. And then squaring this side will give you d squared. Now, I think that gives you a mark. Next. It's actually giving you two marks now, for one for getting rid of the three and one for getting rid of the two. But you would just do that together, wouldn't you? You would say, take that three across and divide, take that two across and multiply. So take the two across and multiply, that would be two d squared, you get a mark for that. And then take the three across and divide, and you've got two d squared, point three, for three marks. Or you might want to write that as two thirds of d squared. That was very easy.